the right of health of the European citizen is one of most important human rights. Unfortunately, even in Europe, this, this rights become a forgotten right. Uh, the states are not able all the time to lead the policy in the health area. It's about the citizen to, to react. We have ambulances with different levels now, paramedics, physicians and helicopter emergency medical services. They are dispatched according to different categories and according to priorities set up by the healthcare regions. Patients are treated at scene uh, during transport and taken not to the nearest hospital, but to the nearest appropriate facility. Um, and sometimes that is a longer distance, but it's a highly specialized uh, facility. Um, so we have the same system, an integrated system, it's a regional responsibility and the patients do have the same right whenever they use the system and whatever they, which number they called or, or who they actually are supported by. So we have the same chain of treatment and these, these two are, are going to be working together. So, so you can see exactly what the hierarchy is here. We have one single chain of command that starts with the president of the state and goes down to the um, commanding officer of, of the emergency services. And they all work in an integrated way. Now, what are the resources that are available to these people? Now, given the statistics we have, we need four uh, emergency workers for one victim. If you see a, um, an accident, a bus accident with 20 people, and, and then we'll have 80 uh, emergency staff. We run a professional area-wide and tailored to suit a market need ambulance service for all people in the area. We do it on the very high level and, but it's only for the normal daily life without any characteristics. All I think is uh, made by normal situations. There's no strong backbone nationwide for particular situations all over the area. My assumption is for a continuously an even situation, well-oiled rescue chain of survival. And the optimal use of the golden hour, we need a flexible structure with the ability to customize <coughs> it in shortest time, beginning from the location of the emergency up to the optimal medical care and hospitals. The ladies and gentlemen inside this sentence are very important needs. I speak about situations, hopefully remote, remote frequency, but real, with a real background. This, it is something which happens less frequently, but when it happens, it needs human resources that are well experienced and trained, and it needs special equipment which is ready to go out. So, the emergency response system. What do we expect from it? We expect it to be ready to respond to individual cases in a defined time limit at a local level. We expect from it to be ready to respond to mass casualty incidents in a defined time and capacity limit at a local and regional level. We expect it to be ready to respond to special situations such as CBRN, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear at a certain standard at a local, regional, and national level. And we expect it to be ready to respond to disaster situations at local, regional, and national levels, but disaster situations usually, they go immediately national level. But we need the teams which can work, for example, in an earthquake in the capital city. You need the local teams to start, you need the regional teams to come and back them up, and you need national response before international support starts kicking in and starts arriving. So this means that in order to be able to do all these things, we need residual capacity in equipment and in trained human resources.